What's up, mi gente? This is your boy, Jesse Adelo, a.k.a. El Profe, coming at you with another video. And this time around, we're talking about horn voicings, some common mistakes, and how to fix them. Let's jump into it. All right, so I've outlined a really simple chord progression here. It goes like this. And for these examples, we're gonna use your typical classic horn section of trumpet, tenor sax, and trombone. Also, as a point of reference, I included my preferred instrument note ranges that I like to work with when I'm arranging. We're gonna keep it really simple, and the horns are gonna follow the same chord progression using pads. In arranger speak, pads are long-held notes that follow the chord progression. Okay, so let's go to our first example. Example one, I took that same progression and I just put in block chord voicings, okay? Now they're broken up here on the piano staff. Now, if you're not that comfortable with the piano staff, the notes are C, E, and G. I took the same notes in the piano and I assigned them to different instruments. And this is what it sounds like. It sounds fine, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. That would be great if it was uh, placed in a verse or a soft chorus, okay? Let's hear one last time. Let's say that that section is not actually a verse, but we need it as a chorus. We want the trumpet to be up higher. So we're actually gonna write the trumpet part up here. Totally fine, okay? A good trumpet player is gonna be able to hit that, no problem. Well, let's do block chord voicings. If it worked before, it's gonna work this time, right? Not as much. In Sibelius, it tells you when the ranges are getting kind of high on your instruments. So in this case, this E natural is on the top range of the tenor saxophone. If I transpose it, it's a high F sharp. It's gonna be at the very top of the range and it's not that a player might, won't be able to play it, but it's gonna end up sounding thin. And the same with the trombone. The trombone, that's a pretty high note. You gotta trust your trombone player to be able to hit that note accurately in a recording session, let's say, or in a live context. And even to hit that note, it takes a lot of air. So if I'm trying to hit that as a trombone player, it's gonna come out loud. So we're gonna try to avoid that. Uh, a warning to all of you, the computer is gonna be able to play that. And when you guys are writing, the computer will play it back and you'll think, oh yeah, no problem. The computer can play it. I'm sure those horn players can play it. And it sounds like this when the computer plays it. So of course the MIDI sounds really controlled, but in real life, you're gonna have a tough time getting that type of sound, even from the best players. So you might think, okay, let's move forward and let's just uh, go with that and I'll write that in, right? I wouldn't do it. Possible, yes. Plausible, maybe not. How are we gonna fix that? Let's do, let's do it this way. So here we have example 2B, we're gonna take these same notes, let's untranspose it. We're gonna take these same notes now, and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to open up the voicing. We're gonna use open voicings, okay? The top note is gonna stay the same because for the trumpet it was okay. The second note, instead of being an E, we're actually gonna make it a C. And because the trombone is already playing the note on a C, we're just gonna give them the line here and check that out. Again, this is about the highest note that I would write for a tenor saxophone, but it still works out okay. And then we're gonna take this line. We're not gonna leave it up there for the trombone, right? The line that starts on the E natural, we're not gonna leave that. We're gonna go down an octave, okay? So if I was gonna write this out onto a piano, we can do that using our handy dandy note input and we're gonna go to reduce. Um, 
into our horns staff. And it's actually gonna look like that. You notice how essentially we took that middle note and we just dropped it down. Um, some people might call it drop two type of voicing. Um, in this case, I just think of it as an open voicing. It's open and it sounds like this. If that's what you're going for, big chords, this is the voicing to go with, right? This works great. It'll sound fantastic and your client will love you. <laughs> your music will sound great. Let's go on to the last example. The last example here, example 3A. In this example, we're putting the trumpet at the very top of its register. This could be the very ending of a tune. We want it to be huge. The trumpet is really gonna soar above the texture of the song. And we need the tenor sax and the trombone to be able to support that sound in a register that works for them. Again, it's not as simple as just doing block voicing or even open voicing. We have to get a little bit more creative. So we came up with this, or I came up with this. And on the staff, it looks like this. Big open spaces, big open spaces, right? The, the horns are spaced really far apart. Okay, here's what it sounds like. I think it's a little too spread out, right? So I would rather hear something else, some other type of thing. Um, and so this is what I would go with. We're going to leave the, uh, the trombone as it was. And I kind of gave it away a little bit because I forgot to change it. That's what the first note of the trombone was supposed to be. And then... So what we're going to do is I'm going to move the tenor sax down a little bit. Actually, I'm going to move the tenor sax down and I'm going to move the trombone down as well. So the trombone is going to start on the third. We're going down the octave now on the staff. That looks like this. So we have our lower voices in tight harmonies, and then we have our trumpet displaced by an octave. The harmonies will blend just like block chord voicing. It's gonna sound like this. It just allows the trumpet to really soar up in the high register while allowing the um, tenor sax and trombone to carry those harmonies and have a lot of presence. So you want to have a lot of beef and then have that really high trebly part, uh, in that, in the trumpet. Okay. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope this video was helpful to you talking about horn voicings and how to spread things out. Uh, based on the horn ranges and the type of style and sound that you're going for. If you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the notification button for future videos. Make sure to leave your questions and comments down below. I will try to get to them and read them as much as I can. My name is Jesse, AKA El Profe, and thank you guys for watching. Peace.